pesky COVID bug may have hampered Cascadia's ability to spin its market share wheels in 2020, but Freightliner's new kit on the Kiwi block is now popping up with increasing regularity. It is a truck named after big mountains in its home state in America, so what better place than central Otago to seek out an early example of the new immigrant owned and operated by McNulty's of Cromwell, a company as grounded as the rocks they hauled, almost as old as their hometown, and well versed in its American truck brand. Standing on Roger Street in Cromwell, New Zealand on a clear spring morning, we're looking into the yard of McNulty's Transport, and there looking back at us is a Freightliner Cascadia. It had an element of penguins in the attic about it. The US is where you see Freightliner's most successful endeavour, but Cromwell, who'd have ever thought. The Madras proving ground on the high plateau of the inner state of Oregon was where we first got behind the tiller of a new Cascadia, so it's real cool that our first Kiwi encounter is here in central Otago. If you imagine a world-class truck test complex in the middle of the Mackenzie country, you're pretty much there in terms of location and surroundings of the Madras facility. Just then, owner Brian McNulty appears. G'day boys, there she is. Spike's here somewhere down the back, I think. So is Brad the driver. Come with me and let's go for a walk. If you're a South Island trucking propeller head, you'll know Spike as well-known McNulty operations manager, Brett Tomkeys. There's a big round of g'days, handshakes and a bit of a yarn before we're heading for our truck of the moment with its driver, 28-year-old Brad McKee. Brad has been driving with McNulty's for three months now and he has driven the Cascadia for all of its 23,000 kilometres life to date. The first thing that really impresses when stepping up into the new cab via the well laid out access is room. Space around the driver is plentiful and the whole ambience is light and airy. It's a full width cab with a firewall to back of cab measurement of 1655mm. And being a day cab, you can't stand up obviously, but there's an abundance of headroom. The whole dash, wrap, steering wheel setup is instantly platform recognisable. If you just jumped out of your Actros, Arox or Shogun, you would only take moments to suss stuff out. A real family feel. This being a short run quarry and gravel machine, the McNulty's truck is fleet spec with high wear heavy plastics forming the dash mouldings and panels in that Daimler charcoal tone. High wear vinyl on the floor in the same colour with hood linings in Daimler form. There is the odd flash of brushed aluminium and carbon fiber lip trim just to class it up a little. In practical terms, you could wash it all with a bucket of soapy water. Fit and finish wise, it is very much Daimler platform quality. The binnacle is standard for the times. An electronic six gauge cluster sits in two groups of three on either side of the telemetrics trip, truck and driver info screen. The wrap is integral to the binnacle and sweeps out to the left, housing extra gauges, climate management, brake valves, entertainment and switch gear in logical groups. There is no infotainment in this jigger and speaking to the subject of built for task, the hoist controls are mounted right there in the wrap. Not everybody's cover, but obviously bloody handy and fast. The smart wheel serves the driver with categories, cruise, phone and light stuff on the right and then navigating them all on the left. It goes without saying there's a plethora of options when specking your workstation, this is just one serving suggestion. The Cascadia was spec for aggregate supply runs to local batching plants and that's what the bulk of its life will entail, running on highways with minimal terrain challenges. In the 116 model the truck runs the Detroit Diesel DD13. 13 litre diesel burner with GHG17 US emissions via EGR and SCR, which is a notch more planet friendly than Euro 6. In the McNulty truck, output is set at 351 kilowatts, 470 horsepower, and 2,237 newton meters, 1,650 pound foot. The torque curve is flat from 975 rpm, and when the lines meet at 1,500 rpm, both key numbers are so close in their respective peaks as to make no difference. Power achieves its ultimate high point when the needle is sitting at 1625 RPM. Bolted up behind the engine is an Eaton Road Ranger RTLO 16918B 18 speed manual transmission and up front a Meritor FG941 axle at 6300 kg rating sits on taper leaf parabolic springs and shock absorbers. Way out the back, Meritor MT4014 XGP with full cross locks at 18,600 kg's capacity, right on airliner 40,000 pound air suspension with dual levelling valves. Fitted with drum brakes, the McNulty's Cascadia has EBS, ABS and all that it needs to run HPMV. Brad points the Cascadia into the Quarrel Gorge, a 25 km or so stretch of the 57 km run from Amersfield to Frankton on the outskirts of Queenstown. The gorge links the Clutha River to Queenstown and beyond, tracking the Quarrel River through the Gibston Valley. It is a scenic splendour, but yet another typical New Zealand roading horror that is all in a day's work for the new Cascadia. 
It's a bit narrow and windy in some places and a bit dippy and uppy in others. Then there's the bits that look fine and tighten up and others that look nasty yet roll benignly under the truck's wheels. Given the awful carriageway, the Cascadia's rubber front bushed and rear air suspended cab gave us a lovely ride. Obviously the data collected from the field test trucks down here in 2018-19 was on point. The truck sat flat through the corners and absorbed the bumps and slumps admirably. Directionality, it was a point and shoot affair, with the Cascadia going exactly where Brad pointed it. And as you'd expect, all controls fell into easy reach. We have said it in previous scribbles that the Cascadia's cosmetics will suit a bulky application, with its torpedo shaped nose design running up the side of the cab and blending into the bin lines. The McNulty unit certainly looked sleek and did not disappoint, both visually and more importantly, vocationally. It's here and it's good. It was always going to be. We may not have chosen a swanky tech fest for our first Cascadia, but we did choose a well thought out and well specced one. On the power front, it needs nothing more than what it has. And for the times that it does motor off somewhere else, it'll be better than fine. The truth is we completed two days with ease and in comfort. Aside from a limited market for a bonneted 6 before configuration in New Zealand, Cascadia's ultimate success will be in the support it receives, allowing every truck sold to live up to its US reputation. You don't sell 150,000 of a new model off the bat when they're shitters. US operators aren't dumb. DTNA is among the world's giants when it comes to designing, evaluating, building and selling trucks, and it's done its homework before giving us its golden child. That means if Cascadia is anything less than an outright success in its somewhat specific market down under, the fault will be in our backyards, be it here or Melbourne, nowhere else. To get the full story on the new Cascadia running out of Cromwell for McNulty's transport, then grab a copy of the November 2021 issue of New Zealand Trucking Magazine on sale now. Have a great month out there, take care and travel safe. Thank you.